Hey friends, I don't know if you've been paying attention to the internet or hot news because there's been a lot of leaks of the PlayStation 5, including the dev kit that people have been using. And it's the weirdest future Neo retro thing that you've ever seen in your entire life, which got us to thinking we should build our own PlayStation 5. However, I've seen a few videos done on this, but it's always with a few things kind of misconceived, um, especially with Austin Evans' video. He used the RX 5700 when the PlayStation 5's expected GPU performance is supposed to be in the 10 to 12 teraflop region, but the RX 5700 is only eight teraflops. It's actually 5700 XT that would be a little bit better. But then also, size-wise, you actually need a console size PC in order for it to fit into your living room environment. And then thirdly, it needs that super fast storage. So we did all of that. We put everything together that could be a PlayStation 5 in this Dr. Zaber Sentry case right here. So this thing fits in the palm of your hand, will fit in perfectly with this TV setup. We've got two PlayStation 4s down there, and I'll explain why we have that in just a second. But our PlayStation 5 is ready to go. We're gonna do some stuff with it after I tell you about today's video sponsor. Today's video is brought to you by Displates, my friends. Look at these gorgeous metal prints behind the, me. Me, they're behind me, not them. They're amazing. They're supposed to mount with magnets. We have them on wire so that they can mount where there's no wall. It's amazing. And Displate plants 10 trees for every Displate you buy. You see this one right here? We have a knockoff Cyberpunk one. They just got the official licensing for Cyberpunk 2077. So if you want a 2077 Displate, metal prints, gorgeous decor, pick one up at the link in the video description, displate.com forward slash UFD Tech Official, and enter UFD as a coupon code, say 15%. Do it. Okay, so the specs of this thing. We have the ASRock X570 ITX motherboard in here. This has Thunderbolt 3 support in case we didn't want to use a GPU and use an external dock, but we decided to put it all in one since we're emulating a PlayStation 5. Then we have 16 gigabytes of G-Skills Trident Z Neo RAM running at 3600 megahertz, some of the best RAM you can get for Ryzen 3000, which is what we're running, a Ryzen 7 3700X, eight cores, 16 threads, which is the CPU that we're going to be getting on the next generation of PlayStation. Then we also have the just reference model RX 5700 XT. Ours is from XFX, but that's not really relevant. We have the blower style cooler in here so that it can actually dissipate the heat effectively in here and just make sure that it stays cool. And then for storage on this puppy, we have one terabyte of the Corsair MP600 PCI Express 4.0 SSD. So that's five gigabytes per second read and 4.7 gigabytes per second write. The fastest SSD technology that you can get out in a single stick on this setup. So we have everything that could possibly be in the PlayStation 5. The GPU is powerful enough, the SSD is fast enough, the CPU is the exact same speed, and we have enough system memory to hopefully make this thing go. So we're gonna set it up over here on this TV setup, and we're gonna show you a few differences between this and the PS4 Pros that are out right now. Okay, so we have the PlayStation 5 set up on the right hand side and we have the two PlayStation Pros down below. Now the reason we have two PS4 Pros is one, the one on the left is actually the standard one with a one terabyte 7200 RPM hard drive. The one on the right with the fancy dbrand skin actually has an SSD in there. And so what we're going to do, even though it's not necessarily apples to apples because I can't load up the PlayStation operating system on our supposed PS5, is we're gonna compare the load times of games from the standard PlayStation 4 Pro to the SSD version to the PCI Express 4.0 version of our PlayStation 5. And as you can see, the Dr. Zaber Century case just fits in so well with the aesthetic of this entire home theater setup. Even if you're not looking to become part of the console crowd, having something like this actually fits in really well. We have all of the, uh, I mean, performance that we need in a form factor that is vaguely similar to the PS4 Pro. So. Let's go ahead, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and run a crystal disk marks just so you guys can go ahead and see that we are indeed running on a PCI Express 4.0 uh, SSD, one terabyte on all of these drives that are in here. And while that's happening, I'm gonna go ahead and switch on over to Reese's PS4 Pro, which is the one with the 7200 RPM. And we're gonna go ahead and do the boot up on Final Fantasy 15. We're gonna see how long it takes to get into game and we're gonna go ahead and start now. 
So all of our games are actually at different save points, but that's not necessarily that big of a concern. We're just gonna go ahead and load. And the timing disparity is gonna be so large that the slight differences that would come from having a different save point aren't going to be that massive. Oh, and it has this stupid unskippable thing. Oh, I hated this so much. You couldn't actually skip through the freaking intro cards. Oh my gosh. Okay, so 54 seconds to get to the load, the screen to actually be able to load. Okay, so now we're at a minute and 15, waiting on it to load into the game. Okay, game's finally loaded. Took two minutes and 46 seconds for us to get into Final Fantasy 15. 54 seconds to get to the load screen, and then a minute 51 for it to actually load the freaking game. So let's go ahead and head on over to my SSD enabled PlayStation 4 Pro. Okay, let's start the counter on it. Right, three, two, now. Come on SSD, destroy Reese's PlayStation. That's going fast, quick, quick. Ready, okay, great. So that is a 10 second increase over Reese's uh, just to get to the load screen, which isn't terrible. Oh, I'm only in chapter three. Oh, that's New Game Plus. That is going so much faster, jeez. Dang, one minute, 20 seconds. Yours was two minutes and 45 seconds, Reese. Half the time. Half the amount of time. Okay, we're done with that. So let's go ahead and also check out Final Fantasy 15. Hitting play. Starting the timer. Oh, there it is. Oh yeah, much, much faster this time around. Okay, so it beat the consoles by 10 seconds to get to this. And then let's see how much faster to get to the into the loaded game. One minute and 27 seconds. That's about where the SSD PS4 Pro was, wasn't it? But this game has increased textures, higher resolution, obviously, and a better experience overall. I mean, look at that smooth frame rate gameplay. If my freaking keyboard didn't drop out. Okay, so we are two minutes and 27 seconds to load into The Witcher 3 on Reese's uh, PlayStation 4 Pro. Let's go. All right, let's close that down. So 52 seconds to get to the load screen on a standard drive, and then a total of two minutes, 27 seconds to get to the actual game. Come on, good PlayStation 4 Pro. Don't disappoint me now. In three, two, one, go. Okay, so it's 41 seconds for me to get into the load screen. It seems like booting from the PlayStation OS is not where we're seeing most of the games, but it's actually going into the game from the load screen where I'm wrecking you. There it is. One minute, 29 seconds. Again, about half. You were you were two minutes, two and a half, and then this one was one and a half. Saving an entire minute on loading, which is not only, especially in a game like The Witcher, is not only gonna be in the initial loadout, but also when you're doing fast travel or trying to go from one part of the story to the next. Okay, so now that those are done, it's time to see how it does on the computer. Reese, awesome, great. So let's go to GOG. Let's, and three, two, one, let's hit play. Now, obviously, one of the things that the PlayStation 5 is going to have an advantage over with a similarly spec PC is just optimization done by the people who are actually making the game. Okay, so that's 15 seconds that I'm into the load screen because I was actually able to even skip the, the, the load screens completely. But the PlayStation can actually optimize for the hardware that's in it because it's going to be the same across all platforms and it's not going to be variable like this is. There you have it. 38 seconds and I'm in the game. 38 seconds compared to the uh, minute and a half it took on the PlayStation 4 Pro with an SSD. 38 seconds, incredibly quick, absolutely destroyed Reese's PlayStation, my PlayStation. That is a two minute savings off of yours. Okay, so with Witcher 3, obviously we, we cut down the time by a tremendous amount. With Final Fantasy 15, with the increased textures and everything, it took a bit longer, but one of the better things about the PlayStation 5 and what we're gonna get is increased performance. As you can see, 1440p gaming performance on this system is quite freaking good. The 10 teraflop performance of the 5700 XT means that you can play 1440p 60 FPS 
no problem. And then if you want to do 4K gaming and hit 60 FPS there, which is what a lot of people will want out of the PS5 console, well, then you can just, uh, you know, uh, decrease the resolution a bit, or you could just decrease the textures a bit, and then bam, you have 60 FPS gaming on 4K with the 10 teraflops. And obviously, as I mentioned earlier, the things that consoles have that the PC doesn't is optimization. It actually wouldn't be hard to get 4K high running at 60 FPS with a 5700 XT like APU uh, if it could actually uh, be optimized for AMD's SoC that they're building for the next generation of consoles. Uh, and as far as 8K support, sure, with DisplayPort 1.4, the 5700 XT can output to 8K. Can it game on 8K only if you like 20 FPS gaming? Sure. Or with really, really lo low resolution, Sure, you can you can make that happen. But one of the big things that everybody's been talking about for the next generation of consoles is the fact that they should also be getting ray tracing, which is not something that is gonna be uncommon for our uh, PlayStation 5 either. We are gonna pull up some ray tracing right now for you to enjoy. And wouldn't you know it, we have ray trace Minecraft. Look at the sun going down, reflecting off of this stained glass. Oh my goodness, friends. Look at how gorgeous this is. Ray Trace Minecraft on our PlayStation 5 doing just fine. And it's actually not impossible to get other Ray Trace games on an AMD graphics card at this point. There are things such as Reshade, which have some people developing ray tracing for them. So we could actually do Witcher 3 ray tracing with our 5700 XT, as well as Grand Theft Auto 5 uh, or any other OpenGL or DirectX 11 game. It should be perfectly fine and perfectly able to do that. Uh, the 5700 XT ray tracing in Minecraft, no problem, easy peasy. The world is tinted by the actual lighting. It's amazing. All right, our PlayStation 5 is also equipped with Bluetooth 5.0 and Wi-Fi 6. So we have everything that you could possibly want with all of the benefits of the PC Master Race ahead of time before the consoles actually come out. But as much as I can rejoice in how I can have a PlayStation 5 level I'd be console-like computer right now, I do think that this meme is entirely appropriate because, you know, PCs have been able to run 120 FPS for years. But can your PC run 120 FPS? There you go. That's, that's, the, that's the meme. And that is basically everybody who's anybody who actually talks about the PC Master Race. There's very limited amount of people who can match the power of a console with their gaming computer. And one of the things that I think I might cover in a later video is how, while yes, we can get a console sized PC right here, actually getting a PC that is a true console replacement with all of the features, all of the benefits, all of the things that consoles do for the same price is actually impossible. And consoles are a way to bring some mainstream gaming to a lot of people. So I might cover that in a later video, but for now, I'm gonna say, my PlayStation 5 is amazing. It's better than both of those PS4s that are right there. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna live in the PC Master Race, being able to play everything that I want to right now. Ray Trace Minecraft on an AMD card? Yes, please. Ray Traced everything, uh-huh. 4K support? You betcha. 8K support? Definitely. Uh, the only thing we're missing is a disk drive, to be honest. Everyone's going digital, screw the disk drive. That's basically right. So that is our PlayStation 5 in a nutshell. Let me know what you think of this PC down below in the comments. Is it something that you would wanna pick up? We'll leave a link for all of the parts that we used for this build down below on Amazon. You can pick them up if you're so interested, including the ITX motherboard, the SSD that we used, as well as the Dr. Zabra Century 2.0 case that's included here. You can get this RGB PlayStation logo background thing on Wallpaper Engine if you're so interested. And while you're down below checking out all the links, you could also maybe consider subscribing to UFD Tech to get more uh, videos like this where we check out uh, random fun experiments of things. Anyways, let me know what you want to see next in the comments as well. And don't forget to pick up your disc plate today, especially amazing ones like this Goku. Displate.com forward slash UFD Tech official. Enter UFD as a coupon code. Save 15%. Yeah, do it. All right, I'm Brett with the UFD Tech Channel. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.